One of my fondest memories of time in Anderson schools. Well, one day in the first grade at 25th Street Elementary School, my entire class was lined up in a row after lunch, and we were all waiting for our teacher, Mrs. Gettinger, to march us back to the classroom. She was called away for some reason, and after waiting for a couple of minutes, I decided to lead everyone in the class back to our room, where we all then sat down at our desks and waited quietly for her return. When Mrs. Gettinger came back to the classroom, she asked how we had gotten there, and I put up my hand in the air and said, it was me who had led us back. Mrs. Gettinger sent me to the principal's office and I got a paddling. But she cried afterward and whispered in my ear at the end of the day, you're a leader. My favorite subject and my favorite teacher, I'll respond to both of those questions. Journalism, English, world and American history and government were all very enjoyable classes for me in high school in large part because I had decided by I think my freshman or sophomore year that I either wanted to be a lawyer, a journalist, or a teacher. My favorite teachers were Mae Gettinger, our much beloved first grade teacher at 25th Street Elementary School, Ruby Jones, my high school journalism teacher, and B.C. Smith, my history teacher and the sponsor of the student council the debate club, and the academic bowl team. BC in particular taught me the value of critical analytical thinking and the importance of attempting to look two, three, or more steps ahead to try and understand the many potential and variable consequences of my actions. Where did your path take you after graduation? My path has been long and varied. My first summer out of high school, I began working for the Anderson Herald as a reporter. And while I was at Indiana University, I went to work for the local newspaper in Bloomington, the Herald Telephone. I had the good fortune to be chosen as managing editor of the Herald Telephone when I was only 22 years old, making me the youngest managing editor in the United States. From Bloomington, I moved on to Miami, Florida, where I worked as an editor, and reporter for the Miami Herald. And then I changed my career path and went to Northwestern University's School of Law in Chicago. Northwestern has one of the top ranked law schools in the country. And I was recruited by several of the nation's best law firms, including Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher, then the largest law firm in Los Angeles. At Gibson, Dunn, I had the opportunity to learn from some of the best lawyers in America including President Ronald Reagan's first Attorney General, President George W. Bush's Solicitor General, and the Chairman of the Board of the 1984 Olympic Games, which were held in Los Angeles. That led me to my next job with the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee. And after the 1984 Games ended, I was hired as Vice President and General Counsel of American Golf Corporation the largest operator of country clubs and golf courses in the United States. The owner of American Golf was an ex-Navy pilot who loved aviation, and he eventually pointed me in the direction of aviation law. I joined a law firm that specialized in aviation in 1992, and I started my own law firm, Airlex Law Group, in 2005. Since then, I've had the good fortune to represent many of Hollywood's biggest stars, including Harrison Ford, Tom Cruise, Clint Eastwood, Michael Douglas, and Elizabeth Taylor, famed singers such as Bono, Keith Urban, Glenn Fry, and Rod Stewart, Hall of Fame athletes like Irvin Magic Johnson and Tiger Woods, and celebrity politicians Donald Trump and Arnold Schwarzenegger to name just a few. Airlex has been named one of the 12 best aviation law firms in the world, five years running. And I've been chosen as one of the 12 best aviation attorneys in the world. I've also been selected as a Southern California super lawyer for 12 consecutive years. It's been an exhilarating ride and it's not over yet. I can hardly wait to see what comes next. 
Well, my 12 years in the Anderson schools prepared me for success in many, many ways. But I'll give you one unusual but very specific example. When I was at Madison Heights, I played in the band. Francis Barker was director of the Madison Heights music program at that time, and he had a very broad knowledge of all kinds of music. In those years, Madison Heights was always one of the top two or three bands at the Indiana State Fair Marching Band Contest, which was, at that time, the state championship for marching bands. Mr. Barker was the first director to ever incorporate classical music into his band's state fair marching routines. We played the music of classical composers, such as Tchaikovsky, Wagner, and Glinka, that had been set to marching routines and that was the way I was first exposed to symphonic music. I also played in the jazz band, and I learned about Glenn Miller, Duke Ellington, Benny Goodman, and other stars of the big band era. I lived through the rock and roll era of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, and all of those experiences made me a connoisseur of music, which eventually led to my election as a member of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestras Board of Directors. The LA Phil is one of the world's great symphonic orchestras and it has been tremendously satisfying to have helped support the Philharmonic over the years. But that involvement also brought me into contact with many of the richest and most powerful citizens in Los Angeles. And those acquaintances and relationships have been very beneficial to me in the course of my legal career. Is there anything you might offer to make our world a better place? Value, love, truth, honesty, decency, dedication, and commitment above everything else in your own life. And try to foster those same values in everyone else who matters to you. Actively search for that which unites and reconciles us, and actively shun that which divides us. If you can do all that, you already will have accomplished a great deal because you will have planted a garden of goodwill that can last beyond your lifetime. Once you've planted those seeds, then lift up your eyes and look for causes that you can pour your passions into that will help the planet and all of its inhabitants, human and otherwise. Embrace knowledge, enlightenment, culture, peace, and justice. And try to do something every single day that embodies your goals and advances your dreams. Life is shorter than you can know. Take action and be a force for good.